Oculus had us all reeling with the brilliant Oculus Connect keynote speech, and we're all feeling very smug about having been early adopters of the little headset that could. Then they appeared to completely knock it out of the park with a surprise insta-release of Vader Immortal Episode 2. Episode 1 was slight but impressive, and promised much. Will the next instalment deliver? We're going to try and avoid spoilers for a game which is both story-based and very, very short, so forgive me if this sounds vague, but we really don't want to mar your enjoyment should you choose to buy the game. Episode 2 immediately takes up the story where Episode 1 left off. It doesn't hang about. It's a minute or so in before Darth Vader is teaching you to harness the Force, largely for moving and throwing things, and it feels initially like it might be the extra hook that the first game lacked. The format remains largely unchanged from the first title, essentially some basic interactions and combat while moving through a series of rooms. If you've played Episode 1, you'll know the drill. There's perhaps a little more excitement and spectacle in this instalment, given the threats you face and the inclusion of fledgling force powers. It's undeniably fun, lobbing rocks about and throwing droids down holes while it lasts. I know that this is in the scheme of things at the cheaper end of content in the Oculus Store. I know that it's meant to be played as an episode of an ongoing narrative and is intended to be more of an experience than a full fat game. Even so, the story in this episode is very, very slight, and some of the beats just miss entirely. In a very short running time, the title manages to contain both action scenes which are over too fast, and longers where you're just staring at the admittedly impressive scenery whilst not doing anything except listening to people talk. The pacing is rubbish, and the bits that are so joyfully great are over far too quickly, and also swamped with technical issues and design problems which threaten to ruin the experience completely. We'll talk about the technical issues in a bit. Some of those can be patched out, I'm sure, but the identity crisis at the heart of the game is a fundamental design problem. In short, it doesn't know whether it's offering the player a game or a vaguely interactive experience. The first episode could be forgiven for this, as it may have been many people's first experience of VR. So, the gameplay there is not too challenging, and the interactions show off the magic of VR while not being too taxing. However, in this title, there are clear signs that they want to give the player more agency this time around. There are free locomotion options, but you still have to stand on certain marks to trigger the next half-interactive bit of story, and you'll hardly be roaming far. Also, the option for smooth turning is still incremental, moving the player in snap rotation, but with a smooth transition. The game does everything it can to frustrate the sense of freedom that VR should bring. Stand there, do that. Ridiculous return to the game area messages still appear should you stray from the very narrow path that the game dictates, which is nonsensical from tethered room scale VR. At times, and this is most aggravating of all, the game will even turn you around or put you in a different spot by fading out to black briefly so it can just put you in the place it wants you to be. It's really jarring and far more egregious than in the first game. The inclusion of force powers really makes the design of the format strain. At times it's incredibly empowering and it's hard not to giggle with delight as you pick up a battle droid and hurl it down a fissure to be consumed with lava or throw it at another droid and watch them both crumple. But then it's over in a blink and you're back to trudging to the next marker on the floor. It promises freedom and creativity like you're going to be in a Jedi remix of Robo Recall and then it takes it all away. Also, it's a lovely novelty that all the touch controller buttons make the fingers of your virtual hands clench but it makes you feel like a right Jar Jar when you're force grabbing a droid out of thin air and find yourself inadvertently doing a double thumbs up. All of this wouldn't be so galling if the story was interesting. It just feels like a loose filler for a couple of set pieces and then a setup for the next episode. A short story needn't be a slight one. While we're there, I have to say that I found Scott Lawrence's performance as Vader a little bland and underwhelming, and I can't help but think that Matt Sloan, another Vader voice veteran, would have been a stronger choice. This is the continuation of what's clearly a flagship quest title, so I'm still bemused by its technical shortcomings. Early adopters may be reminded of the bad old days before the patches that made some things a lot better. In my time with the game I'd experienced frame rate drops and stutters, audio glitches and a couple of crashes, one of which was so severe I thought I was going to have to factory reset my quest. 
There are strange vertical lines towards the edges of the view which seem to be present in a lot of the scenes, striations which tear the image slightly. In many ways, this is a beautiful game with amazing scenery, but the engine feels like it's almost literally coming apart at the seams sometimes. The very first thing you see when you load the game, as with the original, is a flat postcard of Darth Vader that glitches and jerks its way around the view in a nauseating manner. Why is it still there? A black void with loading pips would be better than this. It isn't all bad by any means. The main saving grace, apart from, hey, it's Star Wars, pew pew, bzzzt, is the lightsaber dojo mode. With a different setting to the original episode, a different lightsaber and the addition of the Force, it presents a cool little way to honour the inner Jedi in most of us. Rounds of increasing difficulty, as in the original, mean unlockables like different crystals and such are fun to get. The later levels present a decent challenge. Throwing a lightsaber at enemies and then using the Force to bring it back like a laser boomerang of death will never not be entertaining. It's not Space Pirate Trainer, but all things considered, it's probably worth the asking price for the title alone. Elsewhere, the spectacle of some of the scenery can be breathtaking, and one of the enemy threats presents a jaw-dropping, if heavily scripted, fight. I'm sure the spectacle of it all will be more than enough for some people to enjoy the hell out of. For some others, though, I think that it will be played through in 20 minutes and refunded pretty swiftly. Episode 2 can't really decide if it wants to make you feel like a Jedi or an extra in one of the prequel movies. There are some things here that will entertain, but the addition of force powers is underwhelming and the technical issues greatly mar the overall experience. A bit more player agency would have gone a long way. Overall, 6. Annoying. <laughs>